Hi there, welcome along. We'll just give it um, another minute or so before we get started, just to let some more people um, arrive. But yeah, just bear with us uh, another minute or so and we'll get started shortly. Okay, dokie, that's two minutes past, so I think we'll we'll make a start. Um, so thank you for coming along. This is um, the seventh session of our Engage Teacher Network conference uh, this week. Uh, and this is going to be led by uh, STEM Learning. So just a few uh, little housekeeping notes uh, to start us off. Um, this session is being recorded, uh, as are all the other sessions. Uh, so if you do uh, miss any of the sessions that, uh, that have happened so far, or you can't make the ones um, tomorrow or the one later today, then uh, don't worry, because we will be recording them and sending them out um, in the next few weeks, either in full or in kind of short highlight packages. So, so do keep posted on, the, on your emails for those. Uh, do feel free to put uh, questions and comments uh, in the chat. Uh, we can either answer them as we go along or there should be time at the end. Um, so don't, uh, don't be shy. Uh, the same login, the same link that you used for this session gets you into all the other sessions this week. So um, just use that same link uh, for the sessions tomorrow. Uh, and this registration is also still open. So if you do have colleagues um, and other people that might be interested, do, do share because we are uh, really keen to get uh, the word out to as many schools um, as possible. Uh, so yeah, that's enough from me. I will hand over to uh, Michael and Liz from STEM Learning. Uh Thanks, Daniel. I think uh, Liz is going to be sharing our presentation, so I'll step in and uh, and say thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, absolute pleasure to be here uh, and speak to you all today, um, and um, and we'll we'll get started. Uh, my name is Michael Anderson. Uh, I'm the Maths Education Lead at STEM Learning, and I also am the Education Lead for our Enthuse Partnership uh, Program. And I'm joined my uh, from the STEM Centre by my colleague Liz. Hello. So I think we were going to start, Liz, um, with a bit of a challenge or a bit of a, a bit of an activity from uh, Explorify. Yes, we were. So I'm just going to move this across. So please let me know, Michael. Can everybody see that? Can you see that? OK, Michael? I can, although I'm yep. not sure I want to. It looks like <laughs> a bit of a strange image. Yeah, so um, one of my um, roles at STEM Learning is that I look after Explorify. STEM Learning has many different hats and Explorify is one of them. Um, so Explorify is a primary science digital resource and it has lots of activities on them. One of them is this zoom in, zoom out. So with your class, you would start with this image and you'd ask the children to describe what they might see. Michael, what can you see? Well, I can see some fairly irregular pink shapes clumped together um so it looks possibly like something that you'd see on maybe a human like a brain maybe okay. something like that a brain something like that okay the if, idea yeah i would just say if you can tell that i'm struggling please help in the chat uh with any questions or any guesses for what it might be i think at this stage okay so what you might do with your class is you might get them to look at this picture try and guess what it is describe what they see you then gradually zoom out with the images talk about how the image might have changed i will obviously go through a bit quicker Ooh. than you would with the class we've um, got a suggestion from the chat which was a plastic bag with Ooh. some stuff in Oh, that's interesting. OK, I wonder if that person's now changed their mind. Now we've put now we've put that up uh, this this third image in the series. I don't know. We'll see uh, what comes through. Maybe. Oh, so instead of the human body, which was my guess, we've had a couple of guesses for mushrooms. Mushrooms. Interesting. Not something I'd have guessed. Yeah, this is the whole point behind Explorify. It gets discussion going. There is no right. Well, in this case, there is a right answer, but it's about what 
pupils see, how mm -hmm. they discuss, how they talk to each other. And this is the whole point of Explorify. It's about getting children to think about what they see, what they observe and try and work out what something might be. And as more of the images revealed, I'm hoping, um, particularly if there are some biologists in the room, um, we might be getting a little bit closer um, to what this might be. Um, so here we go. And as I say, you zoom out. Um, and for a primary age pupil, they probably still don't really know what this is. But if we've got mm -hmm. some secondary biologists in the room, I hope we do. And then it comes to this final image. Um, which compares two lungs. Um, this image is actually taken from the Glasgow uh, Science Centre um, and this is part of Explorify does some work together with science centres to enhance learning at science centres as well as on the platform. So um, there we go, that is Explorify or one of the activities on Explorify and each activity has an activity overview, how to run it, the background science and then if you want to take it further it links out um, to um, other activities that might match with that. Um, so let me move on to the PowerPoint and let's move on to slides. So I've talked a bit about Explorify. Um, we took it over from Welcome two years ago now, just under two years ago, um, and we have just had a big piece of evaluation done it on it. And 94% of Explorify users who are primarily teachers um, recommend it to other teachers, which is great news for us. Um, but probably more importantly is that 93% of educators have reported that Explorify has had a positive impact on their pupils. And that comes in many forms. That can be in terms of improving um, their science knowledge, but it also has had impact impacts on pupils' oracy, um, their literacy, their confidence. Um, and what we have seen, it's had a bigger positive impact on pupils um, from disadvantaged backgrounds or for those pupils that don't have a huge amount of science capital. Um, Explorify is run by us in conjunction with the Primary Science Teaching Trust. We are partners um, in this platform. Um, it is still funded by Welcome, but Welcome no longer run it. Um, so yeah, a very, very popular resource. Um, as a secondary teacher, um, when I first started working at STEM Learning, I was told I'd be looking after Explorify. I had never heard of it. Um, it is a primary, stop shaking your head, Michael. I know. <laughs> um, it was um, it was one of those things. Um, it was very much a primary science platform. And so it was never pushed into the secondary phase. However, as a secondary teacher, as soon as I saw it, I went, why did I not know about this? It is designed for the primary curriculum. All the activities are linked to national curriculum statements of all the UK nations. So not just England, it is Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And you can select the nation you wish um, to teach, the curriculum you wish to teach. We also have it available in the Welsh language. But again, as a secondary teacher, I would definitely have used this for starter activities to get the discussion going. And um, like that lung activity we just saw, you could use that with um, pupils in year five or six when they're doing about the human body. You could easily use it in sort of um, sort of with 11, 12 year olds when they're doing about um, human lungs. Um, you just obviously have to change it slightly um, for the for your given audience. But trust me, I wish I'd known about it when I was teaching. So, so that is Explorify. That's one of the things we have with STEM learning. So over to you, Michael. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Liz. And I'd just like to congratulate Jen uh, and everybody else in the comments who did say lungs. Uh, although my favourite comment did come from uh, Jen, said there are air bubbles in it, question mark. So I think technically you're right, Jen, uh, given it was uh, a pair of lungs, um, which, is, uh, which is great. Uh, and Liz, just to clarify with the Explorify, um, completely free resource. You just have to register, email address, and then it's there to use uh, however you see fit. Exactly. It is It is free. Um, all you have to do, email address, name, email address, and the school which you work at, if you do work in a school. If you don't work in a school, again, you can still use it. Um, we know parents and lots of different people use it. Um, so, uh, yeah, please do yeah. sign on. Um, over to you, Michael. 
Excellent. Thanks, Liz. And I think that's probably quite typical of uh, a number of the programs and uh, projects that we work on here at STEM Learning, that a lot of them are free to use resources straight away. You just have to uh, sign up to the STEM Learning site. If you're not already a member, have a browse and, and download all the resources for free. And uh, we'll talk about all of the hopefully different uh, programs that we, uh, that we offer uh, in this 45 minute session, although we might run out of, uh, of time given the, the amount of things that we do. But if you've not heard of STEM learning before, um, our mission statement is to um, help uh, all young people uh, across the UK um, engage in STEM. Uh, we look to support teachers, uh, technicians and other educators um, to support their students in raising attainment and um, in inspiration uh, for their young people so that they can uh, carry on uh, st to study STEM subjects and, um, and to hopefully go into uh, STEM careers as well. So, uh, to come across all Chris Whitty. Yep, next slide. Thank you very much, Liz. Um, myself and Liz uh, are based in York, which is that yellow dot there, uh, the National STEM Learning Centre. And if you've not visited, I really do recommend um, uh, seeking us out uh, and coming and, and visiting the centre. It's an absolutely fantastic place and an inspirational um, way to spend a couple of days with fellow like-minded teachers working on uh, particular projects. Um, we also have, as those grey and white dots uh, suggest, a, a network uh, across the UK, both with our partners in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, uh, and through our science learning partnerships. So those science hubs uh, are based across the country um, and they are there to give you some local bespoke uh, CPD uh, close to wherever you are in the UK. The white dots are our STEM ambassador hubs, and we'll talk more about the STEM ambassador program uh, later on this afternoon, which has just celebrated its 20 year anniversary um, and has thousands and thousands uh, of volunteers wanting to come in and work with your young people completely uh, for free to share their experiences of uh, working in uh, STEM industry. And at this point, even though it's not in the graphic, I should really recommend um, just um, mention our computing hubs as well. So the National Centre for Computing Excellence is also based uh, with us at the National STEM Learning Centre, uh, the sister organisation for the Science Learning Partnerships, and they've got their own network of computer uh, computing hubs as well, which uh, there would be or should be one local to you as well. Um, I think it's probably also a good point uh, here, Liz, to mention that we will share a kind of beefed up version of this presentation. So all the links, all the things that we talk about uh, will be available for you. So you've got that uh, at the end of uh, this presentation to uh, go off and explore and, and find the contact details of all of these uh, fantastic uh, hubs uh, up and down the country as well. Brill, and just a very, very brief slide. Um, this isn't uh, all of the people that we work with, but we have uh, fantastic links with a range of industries, with our key sponsors like Gatsby and Welcome, uh, Charitable Trust, the Department for Education, uh, the universities um, in which we uh, were initially formed, and we have ongoing conversations with many, many STEM industries who are looking to support schools in a variety of different ways. Um, and we work with them to kind of develop uh, how best to support you in school uh, as, as teachers. So, um, for example, recently I've been working with uh, Spaceball Cornwall, uh, who um, are looking at uh, launching satellites from the, the Cornwall uh, airport and how we can support schools down there, um, but also with Google and DeepMind and seeing how um, AI machine learning uh, can be introduced to students at a younger age and work, work uh, with them. Um, to further support teachers who uh, who can support their students as well. So there's always something uh, new, I think, Liz, really, and, and exciting coming along and, and different conversations that we have with a whole variety of stakeholders, uh, ultimately, uh, to help support uh, you as teachers and, and, uh, and put together some things that are really uh, engaging and exciting. So, Michael, how do we work with schools? We've touched on it, but do you want to go into a bit more detail about that? Yeah, sure. So there's a range of different things uh, that we offer. Thank you very much. Sir. The next slide. Um, so we, we've mentioned our STEM ambassador program. That is a, a network of over 30,000 volunteers that, that give up their time and come to sp uh, speak to uh, schools. They can do assemblies, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and bits and, uh, and, and uh, open to a whole range of different activities. Um, a growing part of the, the work that we do is our student facing activities, uh, of which we'll, we'll talk about later on. I know Liz has, has lined up a few examples for us to talk about. Uh, we've mentioned our STEM learning networks, the computing hubs, the science learning partnerships and our STEM ambassador hubs uh, already. Um, we'll direct you at the end of this presentation to the STEM community, which is a closed online community uh, where you can come together and ask questions of your fellow STEM educators, share resources, ideas and network uh, nationally as well. 
we've got a fantastic uh, and I think sometimes um, a hidden gem uh, in uh, STEM club support and enrichment activities. Again, we'll we'll link um, to these at the end of the presentation, but there are some fast, fantastic resources to help uh, support established STEM clubs, or if you're looking to um, develop a new offer, a new enrichment offer for your students, uh, then we've got uh, handbooks, uh, resources and guidance galore. So there's lots of things there for you to have a look at. Uh, Enthused Partnerships, um, which is one of my um, uh, pet projects, uh, is about bringing all of this together over a two year period. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then uh, one of the things that I think hopefully you'll be aware of already uh, is our fantastic CPD offer, um, both residential courses um, at the, the National STEM Learning Centre in York or through our network of uh, providers as well of, of um, science learning partnerships and, and computing hubs. And then finally, we've got, uh, I think I'm going to take a guess, Liz, is it now up to about 16,000 resources or is it higher or lower? <laughs> the true maths teacher there is actually is actually is lower we've got about oh. 14, 14 000 digital resources fantastic we, but we do have about thirty thousand physical resources in the national stem learning center um so yeah um and this is more my area so perhaps i shall um hit the next slide um Perfect. so the last point that michael was raising there is um we have a huge bank of digital resources on the STEM learning website. Um, it's separate to Explorify, it's not the same website, it's a different website. Um, and these are for all aspects of STEM education and all phases. Um, so you can see there, science, maths, computing, design and technology, engineering space, um, they are free to download again all you have to do is register with the website and these resources are there for you to download you can we've got classroom activities teacher guidance presentations um policy how it might improve your pedagogy things on metacognition um the main thing is that they've all been quality assured so that they are useful for a UK educator whether that be in the classroom or whether that's to develop practice um and we have a little sort of um, resume of the resource at the top so you can decide whether it's good enough for you. So at this point, I'm going to see if the technology works because I'm just going to show you the sort of thing um, that we have on there. So let's shut that down. OK, so what I'm moving into screen now is something called um, Mission to the Moon. So I'm going to touch um, upon fairly soon um, stuff we do with this organization called ESRO which is basically to do with space um, but this is very typical of the sort of resource that we have um, basically it's a nice pdf booklet with lots and lots of um, activities that you can do um, so we again we thought we'd get a bit interactive um, here and we're going to ask you um, you can see there's lots of practical things which are, unfortunately obviously we can't do on a call like this but there is a little concept cartoon on page 28 here it is so here we go again michael if you could ban the chat mm -hmm. um here's a good question so i think if i just scroll up um little astronaut asking lots of questions there so i'll leave people a minute or so to read those So not that we got distracted at all, Liz, when we were putting this together uh, earlier on, but um, will ice melt faster on the moon or certain parts of the moon than on uh, Earth? Which uh, I think is quite an interesting question to throw out there and certainly stumped uh, some of my fairly experienced uh, science teaching colleagues as well previously. Uh, if you've got any thoughts on whether ice will melt, uh, on the moon quicker, slower than you would expect it to otherwise here on the Earth's uh, atmosphere, uh, then pop it in the chat. Otherwise, you know, myself and Liz might have to uh, have a guess. <laughs> I think the point to make is that these resources are very, very wide ranging. So mm -hmm. when when you're looking for resources, we have different ways you can find them. You can either go into a general search where you can literally type in t keywords and then you can apply a set of filters so you can filter down what you're looking for. Or the alternative is we do have curated collections. So this is where you can um, 
decide um, I guess I'm going to be teaching primary animals and humans or animals, including humans to year four. And basically it funnels you towards probably the best 20 resources that we might have to teach that topic to that age group. And, and we do that across every subject um, and every every age group um so you can imagine it, it's pretty wide but you know you get funneled a bit if you've been on the oak national academy a bit like that so you get funneled towards the things that suit you um the resources we have some are created by us here at stem learning but the vast majority are created by external publishers so they can range from people like um esro which is the european space education resource office through to um welcome through to charities um football clubs um AstraZeneca, you name it, we have lots and lots of different publishers. Um, all, but all of these have been quality assured. Okay, have we got anybody in the chat who has come up with, do we think we, ice will melt faster on the earth or on the moon? We've not yet, but I'm just, just going to echo that actually, oh, Jen thinks on earth, uh, oh, it will, it will melt. we've got one, one vote for earth. Uh, the resource, uh, resources on the STEM learning site, I must say, from my own personal development, have been fantastic. Uh, and there's things on there that you can no longer find uh, anywhere else uh, online. Uh, when STEM learning first came into existence, think, uh, we digitised a number of resources which uh, have, uh, have since disappeared elsewhere. Um, lots of good archive resources, all the way to uh, current resources and things that are just published. And uh, you know, it's a fantastic way to lose uh, lose some planning time. And uh, used to delve really deep into you know these really good quality assured resources. Uh, Earth is quicker. Um, I think is that 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 seems to be the answer. I'm I'm always tempted never to give an answer away necessarily, Liz. Uh, and uh, people might have to have a discussion with us after the uh, session. Um, but I think uh, I think I did uh, did have a look at uh, NASA's homepage in terms of whether actually uh, the ice will melt or not, or whether it will um, go straight to a sort of uh, water vapor on Earth uh, is an interesting question. I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, we'll go back to uh, the resources, Liz. Um, have you got any particular kind of examples? You know, we, we've looked at the ESRA resource there. Uh, what's your favorite resource on the site? Well, I think recommend? my favourite set of resources, I have to, you've probably gathered, I'm an ex-science um, teacher, head of chemistry, head of science, so um, British Science Association. Um, so my favourite set of resources are these, which are from um, the Best Evidence Science Teaching Project, which is run by the University of York Science Education Group. Um, they are excellent um, they are great for planning schemes of work so this is the home page that we have on our website for them um, if you scroll sort of towards the bottom of there there are um, sheets to help you plan the order um, and this it's all based on research so you can see cognitively how pupils thinking develops over time and which concepts have to be introduced before others so if you're looking to plan schemes of work these documents are excellent once you drill down a bit more you can see that um, you've got the three main topic areas these are then split into um, key ideas you then follow those through um, and you've got a big idea you've then got some guidance notes on that big idea each big idea is then split down into topics which will be familiar for biologists this particular one um, and then what you have are these key concepts and what is really good about this and i'm just going to go back a page because i'm not going to drill down into all of those is that the way the best work is they give you um questions to identify um misconceptions misconceptions so basically they give you a series of diagnostic questions and they give you the research behind them and the sort of answers that pupils might give and if pupils give a certain answer it indicates what their misconception or their misunderstanding might be or their preconception um, you go through those there's also attached presentations um, you can then use these response activities so when you've established um, where the pupils are, so a bit of formative assessment, you can then use these response activities to then help and guide you to address those misunderstandings, preconceptions, etc. Um, so if you if you're a science teacher on this call today, um, if you take away one thing with you, please have a look at these best resources. They are fantastic. Um, yeah. And as I say, when I was teaching and they started to come out, I certainly used them a lot. And since I've 
come out of the classroom, more and more have been added. Um, there is also a primary best version, but it's not as comprehensive as the secondary, which is for 11 to 16. OK, so that's my favourite. Fantastic. And I think, you know, that kind of curriculum sequencing discussions and things like that, that's almost a tailor-made resource to start uh, planning your sequence of lessons if, you've, uh, if you're wanting to update your scheme of work at uh, this time of uh, time of the school year as well. Okay, right. Okay. Real. I think, Liz, we'd uh, plan for me to talk a little bit more about some CPD at this stage. So there we go, yeah. I'm, uh, happy to do that. Um, so um, if you've not, as I said, um, come, had a chance to, um, to engage to come up to the uh, National STEM Learning Centre in New York, I do recommend it. Uh, one of the main things that we offer there is uh, intensive residential CPD. Um, and um, that can be for anybody who is uh, a non-specialist uh, teacher or an ECT teacher, uh, somebody who just wants to improve their pedagogy, somebody who might be new to A-level uh, or leadership uh, courses as well. So there's a whole uh, plethora of courses arranged for depending on your experience and where you want to get to. So I do recommend having a browse through of those uh, courses. Most of them happen at least once, if not twice or three times um, per year. And with all of the residential courses, there is a course fee. Um, within that fee, all the tuition is included, all of the meals and accommodation uh, on the University of York site which is a, a stone's throw away from where you'll be uh, participating in the course. Now, uh, the course, uh, all the courses come uh, with subsidies as well, which help towards those fees. Uh, in some cases, uh, the subsidy can be greater than the, those course fees, so it can pay for the course and uh, contribute towards uh, cover as well. The way in which that works is if you register on the STEM learning uh, sites, find a course uh, that is uh, suitable for you uh, and pop your school details in, uh, URN, of course, code, et cetera, et cetera. The subsidy um, for your particular school uh, will come up and then that will tell you, that will give you an indication of how much uh, the cost um, uh, to school will be. Uh, that depends on where you are in terms of uh, certain needs and what subjects, et cetera, et cetera, um, um, that the course uh, is about. Uh, so that's tailored to you as an individual or the courses of the individual in the school. Uh, individually but uh, they're incredibly generous subsidies you won't find it anywhere else and, and for the vast majority of teachers uh, in um, mainstream schools um, in state state funded schools um, you will not find a better deal uh, on CPD uh, and uh, I'm sure Liz will attest the food is pretty good as well uh, the courses are superb but it's uh, it's a fantastic experience I really do recommend it now, those courses are for a minimum of two days each. So come to York and stay for two days. It could be a three-day course. It could be a course that has uh, a couple of residential periods. So you might come to York for a couple of days, have an opportunity to reflect, implement some things that you've learned within school, and then come back and, uh, together with the same people uh, on the course uh, and consider how that would go, uh, how it's gone so far, what are the barriers, what are the successes, uh, and how best to then implement it, um, working with others in a very similar situation. So I really recommend having a look at those courses, uh, booking on, seeing seeing what the subsidies are for your uh, particular setting uh, and, and joining us. Um, as far as the subsidies go, uh, you can come to more than one course uh, here at the STEM Learning uh, in York. Uh, in a year, you can send more than one staff to a particular course there's no real um almost believe it's too good to be true and there must be some strings attached it isn't uh, please have a look at it it's, it's a fantastic offer for uh, for schools we also appreciate um that uh, it's, it's quite a big time commitment and obviously uh, recently uh, given everything that's been going on uh, cover can be hard to come by etc cetera, etc cetera, and, and the the the, um, the ask can be too great to come to york every other week and we appreciate that um so we have a range of different offerings as well so uh, uh, our science learning partnerships can offer uh, one day courses or courses um, uh, for a half day, twilights, et cetera, et cetera. So again, search for those and see if there's something local to you and uh, that you can look to engage with. Uh, and in addition to that one, uh, in addition to that offer, we also have a range of online courses that are uh, either remotely delivered live uh, with a facilitator uh, helping you through, very much similar to uh, this type of event today, uh, but also a whole range of asynchronous courses, um, which I'd really recommend. Uh, about half of our courses uh, are tailored for um, 
uh, teachers of science and looking at pedagogy, looking at practical approaches, et cetera, et cetera. And the other half are quite general in terms of behavior management or assessment for learning, differenti uh, differentiation and uh, even the science of learning, uh, all written by some really uh, amazing experts in their field. So I'd recommend checking out um, that offer as well. And I think Liz is lining up while I've been talking, uh, just a very short video, two or three minutes. Uh, we've recently uh, spoken to some teachers who have engaged with STEM learning uh, over the last year or so, just to get their thoughts. So we're gonna play this three minute video, hopefully the sound will work. Um, and we'll see, we'll, uh, we'll press play now. So we first got involved with STEM learning a couple of years ago. It's really related to a research project Emotion. Eventually, uh, we decided to look at the science of partnership in the school and also the leadership of completing the work. The development of the quality of the teaching and the expertise, the development of them as facilitators, leading on the programme has been really, really powerful. We've done a lot of CPD and professional development. This has given the children opportunities that they wouldn't have had otherwise. STEM learning gives teachers that chance to grow professionally and to have that subject specific input absolute experts in their field is absolutely critical to support teachers in that vital role they play. It's a real selling point when we're talking to new staff coming into the school, when you're talking to teachers who are interested in professional growth and professional development as really a core of what we do. By providing them with different programmes, give feedback about how that went, uh, did it improve and so on and overall makes them want to stay in the profession. Where are we going to get the best quality resources? You can be reassured and you can get access to whatever you might need, particularly if schools are working with non-specialist teachers, looking at those things that are available can be really, really helpful for schools. Where we've used this include the best evidence, which are a set of research-based resources to use in the classroom, using them as diagnostic questions during the, the lessons is a really good way of finding out what the children do or don't understand about the topic. Also using STEM ambassadors, which are a fantastic resource in increasing children's engagement with STEM. Being able to connect to other teachers in other schools, identifying what CPD might be needed, what CPD is out there, is a huge benefit of the Science Hub. They receive accreditation and a CPD quality report from STEM learning training for us. It networks teachers and individuals who come together with CPD or even to share best practice. The ability to coordinate and meet and network with those like-minded teachers, it is that kind of thing that keeps pushing you on to what is next. You never settle because of this awesome thing. The Peter Sutton Accelerator Programme is a, a brilliant programme to help those teachers in the classroom really put across that computer and bring it, bring it to life for their students. And I know colleagues at my school who are in new teachers that have engaged with and really enjoyed the programme because it helps them understand aspects of their own course and their own subjects better. We focus on computing and of science to enable that wider system leadership role where they're actually like supporting and working with the schools. You look at those pockets of excellence within your staff and you think, we should be sharing that. It helps those teachers to have an, an alternative career path beyond just the classroom teaching. All the cogs interlink. Everything is talking to everybody else. Everybody can be having the right CPD to build towards that single goal within the department. You know, our science technicians, for example, do a wonderful job. We want the right CPD for them as well. STEM learning provides that important focus. Everybody in that sense feels invested, feels valued, feels like they're really able to make a difference. Thanks a lot, Liz. And I, I think I just mentioned uh, following that video that we've uh, commissioned some research recently and, and published it uh, last month, uh, which shows that uh, by engaging with us, teachers are 155% more likely uh, to stay in the profession. And, and obviously that makes sense because they feel invested in, they've been to uh, subject specific CPD. <laughs> Excuse me. And it can really help those kind of retention figures as well for schools. So it's a, a fantastic opportunity. So please do uh, engage with us. Uh, the last thing I'd like to say about CPD uh, is about uh, the project that's probably closest to my heart, uh, which is uh, enthused, the Enthused Partnership Programme. Um, now, engaging with uh, our programmes, um, 
we've 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 evaluated uh, the impact that that can have in schools, um, which is fantastic. But what we've also found is that if schools can engage in a strategic and sustained way over a, a longer period of time, then that actual impact is even greater. So in partnerships are our program that offer that and they bring together uh, the young people in schools and the wider community uh, teachers and then employers or government uh, and uh, other employers uh, together in a partnership so this is six to ten schools uh, you typically typically working together for around a two-year period uh, sorting out a needs analysis really identifying what the um, the next steps are for the schools within that partnership and then uh, coming up with a long-term action plan uh, to help improve departments and outcomes for, for young people um, if you're interested in, in that kind of idea, if you think that a, that a sort of um, partnership with some of your local schools, either primaries working together, uh, secondary and feeder schools, or within a trust, et cetera, et cetera, um, then please uh, check out the Enthused Partnership um, page on, on the website. We'll send a link um, uh, with the, the, the beefed up uh, presentation, and you can submit an expression of interest form. Uh, and funding comes available uh, for these at, at certain parts in the uh, year um, and if you're not successful for one cohort uh, then you know please keep applying because it's a really fantastic um, opportunity uh, and it comes with uh, a significant amount of funding uh, to help you to do something that ultimately you wouldn't have necessarily been able to to invest in uh, without the enthused partnership uh, right that was my uh, slight pitch for enthused partnerships fantastic program if you've not heard of it uh, i'm going to pass back over to liz Okay, so I'm going to sort of change um, tack a bit now and talk a little bit about STEM clubs. Um, so STEM clubs um, is a, a big program that we run here at STEM Learning. Um, it has been funded um, by the Gatsby Foundation and I'm very quickly going to touch on if you run STEM clubs, and I know Michael said earlier, our STEM club pages can help if you're looking to set up a STEM club, so you're starting from scratch, or it can help you if you've got an established STEM club, it can, it can give you some more inspiration as to the sort of things you might want to do and whether you might want to work towards this, um, what we call a STEM club's quality mark, um, which is a, an accreditation that a school can work towards. Um, so things we have going back to our digital resources, we have handbooks, um, support documents available, not only for teacher-led STEM clubs, but also for student-led STEM clubs. So if, if you're um, fortunate to have older pupils um, in your school, maybe six formers, um, you, you know, we give you some guidance on how to do that. Um, also, obviously, activities that you might do. There's also CPD. Um, this is on demand um, online training that you can just do as and when and um, to, again, give you guidance on how to set up or progress your STEM club. Um, we also run special events here for STEM clubs, and I'm going to make a quick plug for um, STEM clubs week, um, which is coming up actually the week after next. Um, and again, embedded in these slides are links to all these um, various parts of what we do. Um, that's on the 3rd of July. And the theme this year is artificial intelligence. Um, so what you will find is if you follow the link on this particular slide, you'll be taken to a page where um, you will find lots of different activities going on all throughout that week where um, eminent um, professionals in the AI field um, give talks and these STEM ambassadors, which I know Michael's going to come on to in a bit, um, give talks at just pupil level about what they do and how AI is important. Um, and also um, there are also resources linked to those as well. So um, that's a great opportunity. So if you're a STEM involved in STEM clubs in any way, please do check out um, those pages. Um, very much linking to STEM clubs, and I know I've, I've mentioned ESRO, um, but basically translate as space. Um, and um, ESRO has been run by us for over 10 years in the UK here at STEM Learning. Again, there's specialist CPD. You can follow the links to find the relevant CPD for the phase you might teach. Again, we have resources. Um, we have challenges and competitions. So these are very, very popular. Um, so we run the Mission X um, competition, which is all about how to get fit to become an astronaut and understand what's going on in the moon. Moon Camp uses um, CAD technology, so that's more of a technology type project. Climate Detectives is um, for a slightly older pupils looking at um, 
images from space um, and how, you know, for example, how glaciers have changed over time and helping um, ESA, the European Space Agency, monitor the effects of climate change. Um, Astro Pi is a computing um, challenge where pupils have got to try and work out how to um, maneuver aircraft in space or in satellites in space. And finally, the CANSAT competition, which is sort of a combination, again, for older pupils, it's a combination of technology, computing. Um, basically, it's a satellite in a CAN, hence CANSAT. And um, there are regional um, events where the CANSATs get launched into well, it's not quite space, it's about um, 100 metres up. Um, but, um, and then what happens is as the can falls back down to earth with its little parachutes, um, there are monitoring um, data monitors inside the can and they monitor certain bits of data and then the pupils then analyse that. Um, the winners for each of the regional heat come to a finals heat and then the winner of the final in the UK then goes to a, an international final or a European final, which would be somewhere on the continent of Europe. Um, other things, we do the space education quality mark, um, again, a bit like the um, STEM club um, quality mark. There are teacher conferences, there's specialist career information. Um, we have specific um, array, um, awareness raising events for space. So Mars Day was in March. Um, Protecting Our Planet Day um, is coming up, I think, the 30th of November. So if you're interested in getting involved in that, again, it's lots of activities, um, eminent scientists and engineers talking about their work um, and how they are protecting the planet and lots of activities. So STEM Learning, um, the education team here runs some activities, both for primary and secondary um, to get involved in. So again, have a look at that and see what's available. Um, and finally, um, I'm going to just mention the STEM or the Space Inspirations Program. So this is a special program um, where people who work in the space industry um, can go into schools and talk about the work that they do. And this is primarily through our um, STEM Ambassador Program, which Michael's going to touch on in a moment. The other sort of things we do at STEM Learning very, very quickly are Cyber Centurion, which is a cyber security competition. Again, there are regional heats and finals, um, again, for years uh, sort of for 11 to 14 and then for 14 to 18 age groups. Um, financial awards for from Rolls-Royce to develop a sustainable STEM project in your school. So there's money on the table there. The Climate Change Educational Partnership, again, resources and activities that are all addressing climate change. And then finally, for more senior people, so 16 plus, we've got the Quantum Ambassadors Programme. Again, specialist STEM ambassadors that go into school to talk about how they use quantum technology um, in their work. But this all leads very, very nicely into, because I've mentioned space inspirations, I've mentioned the Quantum Ambassadors. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to Michael, who's going to give us a very quick whistle stop tour of STEM Ambassadors. Uh, thanks, Liz. Yeah, and again, just to reiterate, all of those resources that Liz has uh, shown you are completely free. Register on the STEM Learning site, download them, get involved, get, and, and you've got this ready-made package of uh, fantastic uh, enrichment activities throughout the year, um, be that space, be that quantum, uh, be that um, computing, programming, and, and space, et cetera, et cetera. So loads of fantastic things here. Uh, also free is um, the opportunity to interact with uh, STEM ambassadors. So there are a network, as I mentioned, of about 30,000 volunteers. Uh, they've all been DBS checked and given some training by us at STEM Learning to come in uh, and work with uh, your young people. Uh, and the next slide uh, gives you sort of an idea of the range in, of activities uh, in which uh, STEM ambassadors can um, participate in. So they can come into the classroom room uh, and help you uh, to um, uh, breathe life into a certain topic, uh, you know, if they've, they've come from that experience and then have first on hand uh, of implementing it uh, in the world, uh, in, in industry, they can come and do STEM club activities, careers talks, uh, networking, um, they can work with non-school groups, so if you run a school, um, uh, um, a scouts or whatever kind of group, uh, they're happy to come and work with you there as well. If you've got science fairs, festivals, open evenings, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, think about inviting a, a STEM ambassador in to talk uh, about their work, and they can host, host um, work experience placements and site visits as well. Uh, one thing that we're going to talk about after uh, these few slides uh, is our online mentoring as well, which is a really um, exciting development um, for the STEM ambassador uh, program, where your students can uh, get a mentor, uh, be mentored in a very safe space by a STEM ambassador. Um, which is a fantastic opportunity to sign up for as well. Um, 
in order to get involved with the STEM ambassador um, uh, program, uh, we have a series of STEM ambassador hubs, as we mentioned right at the start. You can find all of their contact details uh, on the website, um, but you can also pick up the phone and give them a ring uh, if you like. Uh, and there is also a STEM ambassador app. Um, and that very much works like a dating service where you put down exactly what you would like uh, and then we will match you uh, with a STEM ambassador who can come in and work with you. Uh, or if you've got a particular date or event or time, you can kind of, um, you, you can use that service as well. Or if you just uh, like the look of a STEM ambassador near you and you say, yeah, they'd be brilliant, get in touch with them, uh, see what dates work, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, from my experience uh, in schools, uh, they're invaluable. They're, they make a really good, um, uh event uh something that you can uh, involve parents in or put in newsletters that we've had this expert in and working with our students and the variety uh of different ways in which you can engage with the stem ambassador is, is fantastic as well uh, i'm aware we're running out of time i'd love to talk more about them um but i'm going to pass over to uh to liz i suppose for the last few bits and then i think daniel's going to stop us uh, in a second as well are we all right, Daniel, to continue just for a minute or two? OK, that's that's brilliant. So very quickly, um, Michael's mentioned the online mentoring. So th this is a pupil facing um, initiative that we have. A lot of what we do is very much teacher facing, and that's what we've sort of spoken about to, uh, up until now. But we also have programmes that directly face out to um, teachers. So this online mentoring, we run it at two different age groups for the younger pupils, um, sort of is 10, 11, 14 to 16 year olds. It's more about career insights. So it's providing inspiration, raising awareness of different careers. It's also raising aspirations, um, perhaps of, of that group of pupils. And then for the slightly older, more six, the sixth form um, cohort, it's life after school. It's starting to look at what what qualifications you might need, where you need to start applying, etc., for for particular roles. Um, you can see there's a quote in the right hand corner, um, and certainly we we know from schools that this has been really useful. And it's the STEM ambassadors that act as the mentors, um, which is great. Um, so I'll very quickly touch on some other pupil opportunities. Um, again, depending upon the pupil, um, there are Nuffield research placements, which again have been running for over 25 years, originally started by Nuffield, but taken over by us a few years ago. Um, these provide post-16 students with the opportunity to go into a place of work or a place of research to carry out a two-week research project and write it up so they have access to um, high-level in individuals um, within an academic or um, research organisation. Um, again, it's all subsidised with um, bursaries um, for the right uh, individuals, the right pupils. So again, have a look at the website. Um, there's more details on there. Um, other things that we do are summer camps. Um, so for this year, um, they're already booked. But if you're thinking that you have a cohort of pupils that you'd like to give that extra support to, um, or, or you want also some support for your teachers within a school, um, this is an opportunity where we have um, sort of inspirational teachers go into an environment to teach science lessons in a particular discipline, maybe physics, for example, um, and they can provide teacher training whilst also teaching the pupils. So if you like, it's a win win for both the teachers and for the pupils. And the research on that has shown that um, the, the outcomes for the pupils that attended those sessions two years ago now um, were significantly higher than those that hadn't attended those sort of sessions. So again, have a look on the website um, and um, you can find some detail about summer camps. Um, and then finally, we have lots of career support. Um, we've talked about STEM ambassadors, they help with careers, but we've also got lots of booklets, resources, posters, um, and we can help schools, particularly secondary schools, uh, meet the Gatsby benchmarks. Those don't apply to primary schools. Again, follow the link on the website. Um, so, gosh, I think, we, I think we're getting through the list now, Michael. Just, just about, see, I mean... I think we'd uh, I think we knew we'd struggle um, and I think the last uh, the last couple of slides uh, from us are really about uh, how to keep in touch uh, and have some questions so we mentioned before the uh, stem uh, community the link is there so community.stem.org.uk completely free closed network um for, for th hundreds and thousands of teachers to get together and ask some questions so if you do have a specific thing that you'd like uh, to ask uh, then there's a network 
book there as well for, for you to look at. Lots of blogs, lots of uh, featured resources, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So please do uh, encourage you to uh, sign up to the STEM community, have a browse of the STEM learning website, and, um, and ask some questions in there as well. Uh, and then finally, I think the last slide that we included uh, are all the ways in which to sort of keep in touch with us. So it's been a, an absolute pleasure uh, to give you a whistle stop tour uh, of some of the uh, offer that we have here at STEM Learning. Um, but if you want to join us on all the social media channels, uh, have a look at the website and join our STEM community then please be free to do so um, and uh, we'd be more than happy to answer any questions as well so uh, thank you very much uh, to Dan uh, and the BSA for the opportunity to come and speak to you today and thank you very much uh, everybody for attending I uh, really appreciate it thank you so much Michael and Liz that was really really uh, amazing to, to hear everything that you can offer and how comprehensive that all is so yeah I, I think if anyone has any questions um, we'll give yourselves a minute or so to put them in the chat but otherwise um, yeah, thanks, Liz. Thanks, Michael. And thanks, everyone, for attending. Uh, we have another session in about 15, in about 10 minutes from uh, Kindred Squared, who'll be talking about their fully resourced science lessons on uh, early brain development for both primary and secondary. So do stick around uh, using that same link for that. But um, looks like there are no questions. So um, I'll just wish everyone a, a lovely evening. Take care. Brilliant. Thanks, thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.